Alafia, and welcome once again to the online IFA classroom. My name is David Graham, or Awo IFA Fore. And just briefly, again, the IFA classroom is a place for the novice, the beginner, uh, the uninitiated, um, or those that are just curious about the IFA philosophy to get a general overview or a uh, broad understanding of what IFA is, how it works, maybe answer some questions, uh, put to bed some rumors, um, and just kind of clarify, especially for the, the person from the West, uh, exactly how this philosophy works in the worldview of those that created it. Um, the IFA classroom is not a place where I get into specific detail on the hows of the IFA philosophy, how to perform divinations, how to work with the Risha, how to, um, how to create the tools, etc. That is something that is typically done in a more of a teacher-student relationship or a mentorship. Um, we go into some of that briefly, but if you're looking for the specifics of things like that or answers to specific questions such as that, you know, feel free to email me and I will definitely contact you back and we can take it from there. Anyway, the topic of today's discussion is the tools. Um, and this is a part of the IFA philosophy that is very, very foreign to Westerners. I would say of all of the things that we talk about, <clears throat> besides animal sacrifice, this is the one that gets the most questions, the most curiosity. And that, that's what are those tools? Or my favorite is what are those soup terrines? What are those pots? What are those vessels? Uh, that you have in your house. For those of you that are familiar with Ifa or Santeria Lakumi, you will know these as the pots, the soup terrines, um, the altars, um, the sacred implements of our faith. And for example purposes, I have brought my Oya tool uh, and just for the purpose of this video, put it there so you can see an example of what one of you know, one of my tools looks like. Uh, I'm a child of Orisha Oya, the Yoruba spirit of the wind, and that is my primary Oya tool. Uh, this tool doesn't live here, it lives in my prayer room, but again, uh, for those that haven't seen it or don't know what I'm talking about, that is an example. Um, in many of the Caribbean-based or Latin American faiths, you will see things similar to this, up on a pedestal, often covered in various colored cloths or various beadwork. <clears throat> and they, you know, I've seen the most simple prayer room with gourds filled with things to the most elaborate where the entire room belongs to one Orisha. And the centerpiece or the focal point will be the tool covered with cloth and candles and beads and the whole nine yards. And that's simply um, going to be a function of culture and uh, the personal flair of, of the person whose tool it is. I tend to be a, a simplest by nature, uh, so my tools are very simple, not very elaborate, um, but they do the job. And so the question we get is, what are those? What are they? Why are they? How are they? Etc. Easiest way to describe what the tools are uh, is that they are focal points for working with Orisha energy. If you don't understand what Orisha energy is, please reflect back on one of my previous videos about what Orisha energy is. Um, but they're a place for the devotee to go and to focus on that energy, say prayers, say songs, and align themselves with the consciousness of that energy, be typically before making offerings, before making requests, before offering thanks. And they give us a physical representation of the Orisha that we are working with. <clears throat> Tools are typically prepared by an initiate of that Orisha. So if you wanted to receive, say, Oya's tool, you would need to be given that tool by someone who has already received it, someone who's already been initiated into the mysteries of the Orisha Oya. That could be an Oya priest or priestess, could be a Baba Lao, um, but typically you'll be given it by someone who already has that Orisha. And what that means in very practical terms is that that person is comfortable with, trained in, and understands how to tap into the energy matrix of that Orisha successfully to make change, uh, to use that consciousness to influence the life of 
him or herself or the person that they are trying to help. Um, if you want to be a diviner, you need to go learn from a diviner. If you want to be able to work with and utilize the consciousness of the spirit of the wind, then you need to receive that training from someone who already understands how to use the energy of the wind. That's typically how tools are created. A question I get all the time is, can I receive a tool if I'm not an initiate into the, the faith of Ifa? Um, and the answer is yes, you can. Uh, there are instances when a tool is given because it is necessary to make a change in the life of the client or a change in the life of the person coming for help. Uh, that would be an exception, uh, but it, it can be done. Uh, if you need grounding or stability, you can be given a lokun uh, or yemoja lokun to meet that need. The tool will be created for you and with you, and you'll be given instructions on how to take care of that tool. Uh, but the typical case is that the person needs to receive the consciousness of that Arisha and they need to know how to work within that. Within each one of the tools, you'll hear people say that the secrets are contained inside. Um, if you follow my channel, you'll know I'm not real big on Hocus Pocus Mumbo Jumbo. But inside each of the Arisha tools are the components that represent the Arisha that help the person go into contact with that Orisha energy, um, that help the person draw down that consciousness into their own consciousness, um, thus creating a bridge, uh, allowing the work to get done. Uh, so that's your typical case. Typically, when you receive an Orisha, it is presented to your Ori, and you are trained on how to really work with that Orisha, not only to make your life better and help you know, yourself or your loved ones, but in the event that you need to someday pass it on and give that Orisha to someone else. Uh, and that is, that is receiving or becoming a priest of your Orisha energy. So if, if you're a Shango and you crown Shango, you will certainly receive Shango to your head. You'll also receive a divinatory tool so you can divine through the energy of Shango and certainly be expected to be able to go into a deep connection with that energy um, in order to make a bows, in order to uh, do work for yourself, in order to do work for other people. Uh, so yes, you can receive a tool and, and not know how to do all of those things and just have it be very passive, but more often than not, when you receive a tool, it's so that you can work with it. Uh, in Santeria Lakumi, it is very common to receive many Orisha during uh, your making of the saint or during your crowning. Uh, what I have experienced with African Ifa is that typically the, uh, the devotee receives their primary Orisha which is identified you know, between three and seven days of age. And it's not unusual to have familial Orishas that pass from one generation to the next. And typically, uh, they have to do with your way of life. So blacksmith or those that are working with tools may be devotees or Orisha recipients of Ogun. Those in the marketplace would receive Oya. Those that were going to go into politics or some sort of uh, leadership role may receive Shango and on and on and on. And normally when the parents pass, those Orishas pass down to the children who take care of them and on and on for future generations. And in fact that, you know, if you were to ask me what the most potent Orishas are, they're the ones that have lived or survived for many generations in the family. Because they have the accumulated wisdom, knowledge, and ashe of your parents, your parents' parents, and the ancestral lineage that we stress all the time in Ifa. A um, couple other things I, I, I get asked is, is this tool, sorry if I'm pointing the wrong way, is that Oya? Well, um, no, the you know, Oya energy complex is certainly much larger than that. Um, it's hard to uh, take the idea of the Yoruba spirit of the wind and put it in a small container. But through years of prayer, meditation, ebos, it is a microchasm, a small spark of that Oya energy. Um, the other thing I get asked is proper etiquette with the Orisha tools or with Ifa tools. Um, 
And the proper etiquette is very simple. Sacred spaces require sacred behavior. If you are in someone's prayer room, if you're lucky enough to have your own Orisha tools, if you're lucky enough to have a spiritual mentor who allows you to come into their sacred space and make offerings, prayers, or work with their sacred tools, then that's a commitment that requires sacred behavior. There are no, again, my opinion, there are no taboos. Be careful how I say things. There are no specific taboos to what shouldn't be done in front of Orisha, meaning if you walk through your house and you walk down a hallway naked and the Orishas are in the next room, you're not going to burst into flames. But require, but sacred spaces require sacred behavior. Um, and that does mean that when you're in the presence of the Orisha, especially for uh, doing spiritual work, that you act accordingly. Uh, and that would mean just behaving with good character, trying to maintain your center, maintain the balance between head and heart, certainly making sure that you're sober, making sure that you're focused on the task at hand, and making sure that you treat the tools with respect. The idea is that the tool is a focal point for your energy that's helping you to bridge the gap to what you're connecting to. Oftentimes we place the uh, offerings themselves on top of the tool, uh, and that requires a certain level of profound understanding, uh, a certain level of deep respect for the Orisha themselves and for what they can do and can accomplish, and requires that you behave accordingly. Um, the only other thing I would say is I encourage people to not have your spiritual tools in the space that you sleep. Um, there's a lot of reasons for this, but the main one being that when you shut down your consciousness at night and you allow yourself to travel, to recharge the battery, to go on spiritual journeys, uh, it should be unencumbered, it should be unfettered, and there are certain, certain obligations, certain heaviness, certain power uh, that these tools have. And they will influence you when you're in the room with them, whether you know it, understand it, or not. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll do a couple fun stories about spiritual tools and just about some of the <clears throat> inexplainable coincidences that have happened in my IFA career um, in the rooms that I keep my tools and to the tools themselves, things that according to science shouldn't happen. Um, please don't drill down on me about the why behind it because I can't tell you. I can't tell you why some of the things that have happened have happened. I can just tell you that they have happened. And that it's evidence to me that these tools in a very real way contain ashe or spiritual energy that manifests itself on the physical plane. Um, I think that's about it for the tools. Um, again, in Santeria Lakumi, it's not uncommon to have many. In Ifa, it's more than common and certainly acceptable to have one, two, or, you know, as many as are either A, required and called for by divination, or B, um, inherited from the future, past generations. Um, if you were an African Ifa priest, you would certainly have your Ifa, your Arumula, um, which includes both hands, uh, and you would certainly have your primary Orisha tool for whatever Orisha you were crowned and were born into. And then certainly you could have others if you know, required and confirmed through divination. Again, it's interesting to me that that is, of all the aspects of our philosophy, um, besides animal sacrifice, that's the one that gets the most questions. People, and it speaks to, you know, what, what the tools themselves, again, really are, because when I bring people into my home, invariably one of the first things they're drawn to is one of my many tools, and they want to know, what is that? Um, and my house is covered in different artwork, different sculptures, a lot of conversational areas. Uh, but the one that I get the most is, what is that thing? Uh, and I don't think that that's a coincidence. I think that's the energy of the Orisha um, connecting to the energy of the person that sparks up a conversation. 
So if you have any questions or concerns about the tools, please let me know. If I've omitted something, please let me know. I'd be happy to clarify. I'm not going to go down, you know, maybe one day I will, but I'm certainly not going to go down each and every tool and describe what it is and how it is and why it is. Uh, those are, number one, not something for the uninitiated, but number two would take an awful long time. Um, and that's something that you receive in a, in a teacher-student relationship in this philosophy uh, when it's needed and called for via divination. So until next time, take care of yourselves and take care of each other.